আকাশি Agashi here. So Hotel de Luna has finally come to an end. So this is a drama Agashi and I has been watching together and Agashi is not here to do the review but we I am going to be reviewing it and I will be sharing his thoughts and everything into it. So spoiler alert and if you guys have not seen it do check out the drama. Highly recommend it. It is great and if you guys have seen it you know Check out this review and see what your thoughts are and share to us what you thoughts on these dramas and all this stuff like that. Um, if you guys do like this video, click thumbs up and click subscribe so you guys can continue watching them and get notification on every time we do a new drama review. So I'm go I already revealed the first two drama with you guys. I'm gonna continue from episode three all the way till the end, episode 16. A uh, little advice, a little heads up, it might be long, but I will get through this review as fast as I can and so you know give you guys everything and just go through as fast as I can and um yeah so let's go ahead and jump right into it so for episode 3 to episode 6 right there from this episode on we get to see uh, Chan Ma Wu's past coming into play and it starts appearing in uh, Ko Chan Sun's dream so you know we get her to we get to see a past of her, her and her troop her troop stealing from rich people and it looks like a princess carriage and um she Chan Ma Wu gets captured by the captain who she ends up getting close with and entangled with and uh, you know even though she's a part of the bandits he still helps her and then we get flashback to the Hotel de Luna Chan Sung finally accepts the job and he starts to slowly learn about the hotel that there is a beauty within it and you know Chan Ma Wu ex explains to him that the hotel does not does exist in the real world however most people cannot see it because of the outer appearance she tells and that when a, vis a, a human visitor comes, they come to um, the hotel, you know, and they give them the pricing and it's very expensive to sleep in a room or stay in a room and even the person agrees to stay with it, they send this human to room 404 and does not return to the outside world. So it kind of makes us go, okay, what is up with room 404? Mm, I'll explain later. <laughs> so he is introduced to the uh, staff, he gets to learn about the life, how they died and how long they've been working at Hotel de Luna, you know, like there's housekeeper Choi, there's Ken the bartender, and they're Jin Hyunju, the receptionist. So those three are the main ones that kind of play with us throughout this drama. And he gets to be with them and learn from them and everything like that. And then he, Gong Chan Sun later explains to Chan Ma Wu that he keeps having dreams about her and her past lover, which makes us think that he's probably the reincarnated of her past lover. But you know we don't know yet because in Ma in, in Chan Ma Wu's past, there's Yong Wu and the captain. So we're kind of like wondering like who are these guys yet? So they really have an explain to us besides some pieces and pieces falling in through Go Chan Sun's um, dream. Now we get introduced to uh, Kim Yuna. She is a girl who gets uh, bullied at school and she got killed. However, her soul ends up going into the person's body that killed her and in an attempt to help this poor little girl Gu Chan Sun and Chan Ma Wu gave her a chance to live again but by allowing her to live in this girl's body that had bullied her. So now she's pretty much like another spirit possessed into a human's body you know pretty much so she can see ghosts and everything but like Chan Ma Wu said to her continue living this life because she uh, you treated bad and she killed you so now she's gone you get to live her life you know live it however you want since you always have to work hard to get what you want you now live her life she's rich you get everything so continue living it and so as the um episode continues on you know we get to see that you know Chan Ma Wu she's like she has a good heart but she loves spending money and living an extravagant life and like the truth is that she had already repented for her sins already but she's so comfortable and she's waited so and she's waiting on something and pretty much it get explained that like in the past like she 
when she became the new owner of the guest house of the moon whatever like that she was living like a very poor life the you know she didn't do well with you know the hotel and everything she didn't make money and now hotel de luna is making money and she wants to enjoy it and so uh you know go chanson finding out about this he kind of wonders what is her past who is she waiting for and all this stuff like that and he he asked her that like you know i saw a man in my dream and he says that and once everything is done he promised to build your home next to a tree and this gets like chan ma to be shocked and she's pretty much like want to know what he's seeing in his dream you know and like you know like he's just like talking to her about their dreams and everything and he touches her moon tree and it started to bloom leaves and like now we're like he's like he's like what's he's like oh my god what's going on and she's kind of like what the hell my tree has never bloomed leaves or flowers or anything what did you do and then now we get flashed to Michael's statement that once the tree starts to bloom leaves and flowers and it falls off Chan Ma Wu's time will start and will tick like pretty much it blooms and everything her time is ticking now that it is time for her to go to the afterlife and she has to leave and so she's kind of like oh no like she kind of doesn't want to leave seems like she's still waiting on something but Go Chan So doesn't know that and he just thinks like oh I'm connected to this tree I brought it back to life so with the tree going growing leaves already like the employees like they're like oh my gosh now we're gonna have to leave pretty much the employees they also hold grudges or something like that that they're still waiting for we don't know yet and so they're like you know let's get rid of go chan song because if he passes away the, the leaves will probably disappear and we'll continue living so they decide to send him to room 13 where there's a haunting ghost in there and this ghost hates human well they send him in there and chan man will agrees with this plan but she ends up going to save him and um what is it the she ends up saving him but the ghost ends up escaping and now it becomes like a disaster for them because there's a ghost loose in the human world and we don't know what this ghost is up to besides she hates humans and she we get to see her killing men you know like she gouges their eyes out and we don't know what it is and so now chan ma Wu and um, go chan sung has to you know go find this person you know so um what is it um throughout this time of they're gonna go find this ghost that has been released out into the human world a bride goes up stumbles upon the hotel and they find out that her parents wants her to marry off to to be married off to someone because they don't want her to die alone they want her to go with uh, a groom so she can live happily in the afterlife and so they put like this little red pocket and whoever finds it like floats out there and whoever finds it becomes her groom you know and so they're kind of like uh, Go Cha Sang is trying to find this um, red pocket because he met with the bride ghost and she does not want to be married off she just wants to go alone so he goes looking for this red pocket and you know uh, Chan Man Wo did not like that Ko Chan Song keeps like you know doing everything for this bride and being nice to her pretty much she's kind of jealous so she ends up making Sanchez be the one to pick up the red pocket and now Sanchez has like this red string attached to this bride ghost and like Ko Chan Song like I have to help Sanchez escape from it so he comes up with a brilliant plan and he was going to marry her off to another ghost in the hotel so that they don't have to take on a human and so uh, Chan Ma Wu tells him not to do it because once the bride ghost is being sent off the human groom he's he's okay he goes back to his normal life nothing happens it's just to perform their ceremony but Chan Sun didn't listen he finds a groom for her, this bride ghost but this bride ghost doesn't want to marry anyone else she wants Go Chan Sun and so they end up Go Chan Sun agrees with it that he'll help her so that she can go and so they end up meeting with the bride's um, parents and Chan Ma Wong finds out that these bride parents um they are actually not the bride's parents in the real world and everything they are actually the groom's parents so their son is in a coma and the bride is holding on to their son's spirit and they want to send her off so that he, her their son can wake up from his um his coma. Chan Ma Wu sends Kim Yuna to do this, who she can see his ghost, so that she can go and bring the spirit of the groom to them, so that the, they can perform the wedding for the bride and the groom, so they can go off and be together. And so, uh, but it's a way of showing that if she takes his spirit, he dies in the human world, which the bride realizes, and she finally lets go of her loved one, and she cuts off the string that attaches them together, and the groom wakes up in the human world, and she goes off to the afterlife 
you know, after life and everything. And later on, like, pretty much, um, Chan Man was pretty much telling Chan Sun that, like, this is why you don't do things recklessly. I know what's going on, so you're supposed to listen to me. Like, that's why I told you to just shush and listen to me, you know? And so, so for episode 7 to episode 8 right there, um, this episode we get to, this episode we get to see a little bit different size of Chan Ma Wu and her powers and all this stuff like that, which she's capable of. So this vengeful ghost that had escaped it from Hotel de Luna and is out there killing men, gouging out men's eyes and everything like that, they, fi uh, they find out that, um, what is it? They, um, this vengeful ghost, she's actually killing a particular group of men is because they were responsible for her committing, committing suicide in the past. This poor girl was, um, she pretty much, she got involved with these group of men and they had, you know, they did a sex tape of her, a really adult bad tape video of her and they uploaded and it was pretty much assault to her and she was left in, you know, misery and everything and she killed herself. And so pretty much she was killing every single one of them leading up to the main guy, the main CEO, who was the one who committed all this in the first place and that was her last tar target. Before, um, what is it, um, Chan Ma Wu and Gu Chan Sung can catch her and bring her back and make her repent for all this and, you know, don't get, um, don't turn into a vengeful ghost, uh, there's the fourth Mago who catches her and burns her spirit away and Gu Chang Sung gets to witness her vanishing, burning in front of him and he realized that, you know, like, oh my god, like, this is what happens, a vengeful ghost. When you turn to a vengeful ghost, this is what happens to you. Well, Chan Ma Wong decides to take revenge for this vengeful ghost because they were not able to get to this vengeful ghost before the fourth Mago got rid of her. So Chan Ma Wong goes up to the CEO and pretty much take justice and have the deity kill him instead of her. So pretty much, like, she can, the CEO refused to admit that he did this, so she pretty much um, make him go into this illusion where he's gonna get killed if he doesn't pretty much remember and show remorse for his action which he still didn't and so it's a way of showing to the fourth Mongol that he he did it but he doesn't care he doesn't care for his his action he has no remorse for it so therefore he gets killed by the deity and so pretty much she kind of twisted around them so that the the Muggles can kill him or get rid of him instead of having Chan Ma want to kill him because they killed the vengeful ghost before you know they were able to get her to repent and Chan Ma Wong hated that so she went and did that to the CEO. Oh, so we finally get a pass of the wedding night scene. So there's like a wedding night scenes that keep coming in here and there to uh, Chan Song's dream, and it finally gets revealed to us that the wedding night, um, the princess Princess Song Hua and Captain, his name is Captain Gu. Go Chung Mil, they were going to get married. Uh, Chung Mil has obtained the trust on Chan Ma Wu, and in the end, he betrayed her by killing her people, the people she cherished the most. Being the first person they killed was Young Wu, and she was so she was the only one left, and she. She was so upset that she returned the night, the wedding night of uh, the princess and the captain and she killed everybody and she showed no mercy to the princess and like just killed her. And after that she changed into the princess wedding clothes and sat in the room waiting for the captain to, to come, come, you know. So we got a little bit scene of that, not the full thing so we don't know what happened yet. And then moving on, um, there's now a ghost, an imaginary ghost that keeps appearing in this house and it was like driving uh, the sun kind of crazy and all stuff like that. And we find out that this imaginary ghost was created because the mother of the son, she got married to her husband at the age of 22. She never got a chance to see and experience the world. Therefore, she created an imaginary self of herself who can live the dream she never lived. Uh, Go Chan Song and uh, Ma, when Chan Ma Wu helped her get rid of it so that her son can live in peace and this gave Chan Ma Wu an idea of what she can do. She realized that I, uh, um, I Mira cannot see ghosts because her grandmother stated that she was born with bad luck because she was Princess Song Hong in the past. She was born bad luck so she received a bracelet, at, a bracelet at a young age to prevent her from seeing bad things, ghosts and stuff like that. Chang Ma Wu invites her to Hotel de Luna, takes the brace braces away from her, recreate Imeira's child favorite child favorite childhood memory and created an imaginary ghost for Imira uh, um, and created a bad memory that her parents never loved her. So she 
try she tricked Emira to um, take on this imaginary um, past ghost into her so that Emira will live forever pain in her life that her parents never loved her. So it was a curse that Chan Ma, Chan Ma Wo was going to get to her. Chan San found out, came to the rescue, he hugged the little girl, took in the curse, and before doing anything, he states that, you know, Chan Ma Wo will always protect her, protect him, so he will, you know, go ahead and take on this. And it, it's pretty much like the same statement that the captain stated to her that he will always protect her in the past. So Chan, Chan Sa ends up in this long sleep and he didn't wake up for like three days and he had a dream of the wedding night, the betrayal, the princess and everything. And when he woke up, Hotel de Luna has disappeared and you know, he found out that like, you know, all he saw, the reason why she, you know, Chai Ma Wo did all that was because of all the past he just saw. And she is gone now and he is now looking for her because she can't leave to anywhere more than a day because if she leaves, let's say she goes away to Busan, Hotel de Luna will disappear and the tree will end up over there with her and Hotel de Luna will create over there. So wherever she goes, the tree follows her. And so he's now trying to find where she went because Hotel de Luna has disappeared now. So episode 9 to episode 10 right there, Chan Sun is now looking for Hotel de Luna and the problem is he cannot see the hotel or sense where it is. Only ghosts can. So for a human, it's really hard for you to find the hotel. Even though he can see ghosts, he's also he's still a human, so humans cannot see it. So remember the chairman who um who what is it? Um that had the painting of the dot tiger, he passed away now. So he came to Hotel de Luna and he ended up, but the hotel wasn't there and he ended up seeing Chan Sung and Chan Sung was like, you passed away. As a ghost, when you're wandering around, you get lead up to the hotel. It's, you get a sense of to take you over there. So he followed the chairman to the hotel and he found the hotel. And so now he's back again and he's trying. They're at this new location where, you know, they're kind of like Hotel de Luna. is kind of living crappily and everything like that. So um, the chairman helped lead um, Chan Sun over there. And he's trying to return to work as if nothing happens, you know. And he's trying to help them. He brings the CEO in and uh, the, the chairman whatever in and everything like that and you know just when he's trying to get back to work he sees like this guest standing outside of the hotel and then the guest was like can I come in and he says sure go ahead come in and the guest comes in and it's like this water goes and like it just went through him and water just started pouring and the hotel ended up being flooded with water and then he had no idea but he had let in a spirit of the well pretty much into the hotel and everything is flooded and like he realized that it is a bad situation now for the hotel because if this spirit of the well pretty much doesn't leave, you know, the hotel's gonna keep getting flooded with water and it's just gonna ruin everything. So he goes to strike a deal with the spirit of the well, knowing that, you know, he's gonna put himself in danger, but he's gonna go do it. And um, he went and he was surprised that this spirit is not a vengeful ghost or anything. He's just afraid of being abandoned because he explained his story that he was this well producing water to this uh, wine rice wine company and they've been using so much of him and he has not been able to produce, produce enough water for them. And they're pretty much like looking down on him and they're draining him so much. So therefore, Chan Sun makes a deal with him that, you know, he will help him find him a new place to stay so he doesn't have to worry about it again. And in doing so, he gave um, Chan he showed Chan Sung Chan Sung's greatest fear and Chan, we end up seeing that Chan Sung's greatest fear was seeing Chan Ma Wo get burned up like the previous vengeful ghost and so he believes that it is his duty now to protect her and so that she wouldn't turn out like that so he's going to help her pretty much to forget about everything and so she doesn't get burned like that so now back to the chairman he um what is it he was able to um he offered um because Chan Sun is doing so much for him, he offered to allow the spirit, uh, the spirit of the well, to live at this chairman's uh, his his pond, pretty much. So they put the spirit of well over there, and then that's when Chan Sun ends up meeting Jin Eun, which is played by Sully, who is the chairman's granddaughter. And so she, the chairman loves his granddaughter so much, and he he tries to match make Chan Sun with the uh, the his granddaughter, which is Sully. And you know Chan Sun ends up rejecting her because he has someone he already loves and we find out that he's falling in love with Chan Ma Wu. And so, you know, um, what is it? Um, on the other hand, now we get introduced to a new villain who is 
doing serial killing on the side and you not stumble you not accidentally stumble upon it finding out that many ghosts has been killed by him and their body was buried in the forest and you know this killer was named um so ji wong who was actually an acquaintance of sanchez and go chan sang back then and so we get a flashback to back in college in boston a young lady committed suicide and so so ji wong put the blame on uh sanchez pretty much spreading rumor and sanchez was like you know very upset about it and he didn't know what to do he didn't know how to cope and so Ji Wan's like you know you don't know how to cope you know let me help you and so he pretty much bullied Sanchez telling Sanchez to kill himself thankfully there was Go Chang Sung who was a great friend to Sanchez he helped overcome um, this sad period of time for Sanchez and so we don't know what Chan Sung did, but apparently Sanchez, Go Chan Sung, and So Ji Woo has a past together. And then, for this case that is being solved, we get to see a detective there who is solving this case, this criminal crime case, and we end up seeing Yong Woo. He is now reincarnated to Detective Park Young Soo, and Cupid. Mago decides to tie him up with uh, Emira, which is like so bad because these two apparently their life, their love line, they're not compatible for each other. But because the Cupid put them together, they are going to be together, and it just isn't right because you know it's Yongwu and the princess, and the princess killed Yongwu in the past. So you're kind of just like, oh my god. And Chan Sung saw it, so he's kind of like, oh my god, like I can't have the two of you meet, you know, Chan Ma Wu because she's gonna like flip out because you guys can't be together. But um, and so um, what is it? Remember that painting that um North that painting that Chan Ma Wu has been trying to have Go Chan Sung sell. So he finally sold it to the library where the chairman owns. And so they go over there and they find out that there's an uh, unexpected ghost guest in the library that it's been in there. And so um, Chan Sung goes and see what it was up. And he finds out that this ghost has been trying to protect a um a book in the uh, library and he can see this ghost he has a little conversation with this ghost and he said that he will get rid of whatever this ghost is trying to hide so this ghost was actually a principal of an elementary school and after she died she donated some books to the library and there's a specific book that holds her secret past Chelsea was able to get the book and open it and apparently it was a picture of the principal when she was young and she had a baby and that baby turned out to be Go Chang Sung. He finds out this principal ghost is his mother and so we find out a little bit about his past that when this is the first time he's meeting his mom and she's a dead ghost and we find out that his mom never wanted him to be born in the first place and it was an accident and when he was born the mother gave her back to him to his dad which was played by old Jiho and she moved on with his her life and she never kept in contact with him ever again and he was never told whether his mom was alive or dead or nothing he never heard about it so you know Chan Man Wo not knowing how to you know com comfort him and everything like that she she wants to punish his mother but she just couldn't punish his mother so she pretty much they helped get rid of her dark past so now she's just gonna okay with her past being hidden and she's only known as this principal of elementary school she's gonna go through the afterlife and she finally apologized to her son for not being able to be there she realized that Chan Sung was her son and she apologized to him and he's just kind of like it's okay you know it's all right you know like they ha he has he knows this is mom but he doesn't know how to feel he sends her to the afterlife life and she leaves and thinking Chan Ma Wu he thanked Chan Ma Wu for letting him see his mom one last time before she goes he decides to show her someone who she's been waiting for for so long she takes him to go see Detective Park, uh, Park Young Soo and she realized that it was a young one and she's like crying she's like oh my god in his past life he was a rebel he was a thief and now he's a detective he's a police which is great for him so for episode 11 to episode 12 here because of what happens in the you know previous episode of Ko Chan Sung's mom and uh, Chan Ma Wu meeting um, you know the reincarnation of Yong Moon again the two of them are in good terms and they try to you know they are going to run the hotel really well and they have this special 
pretty much service that they provide to special guests where they can make phone calls and these phone calls will bring them to another person's dream and they can speak to this person in their dream so the two of them end up doing like you know by doing this all the girls in the hotel wanted to do with it the two of them end up providing this special service to a bunch of girls who gets to make calls and one of the girls ends up making a call to bts and they're like oh you're not allowed to do that you're only allowed to call people you love and you know and then we get to see this that's a hilarious stuff and we get to see a scene where these this father and this son they got hit by a truck driver and they passed away and and um, it was because the son's ball rolled into the street and the dad went to stop him from going to get the ball and they, the truck hit them. So this truck driver, he feels guilty and he cannot perform his job anymore. He decides to quit. Both the father and son did not make a special call to the, their wife. They made a call to this truck driver said, it's not your fault, it's our fault. You should never feel bad, okay? You know, continue on your life. We do not blame you for killing us. You know, so it, it gets to show us, you know, some stuff they do and some how, you know, some girls, they... You you know they die by accident or stuff like this happened the, but they don't blame people you know so we get to see some good stuff of that and then we now finally move to onto the moon tree and it's a, it is blooming flowers now and the employees realize that oh no the flowers are blooming it is the time is ticking here once they start falling we have to go but the thing is there's this firefly that keeps flying around the tree that we've been seeing every time like when there's a moment that it was flying around and um, Go Chang um, saw it and it fly out into this this like invisible form out the window and he's kind of like what's going on and we realize that and we get explained that it is actually captain the captain Chang Meng who is this firefly it appears he has been watching Chan Ma Wong since the start of her punishment he cursed himself and he decides to stay as the firefly around her and waiting there for her so he cursed himself his memory and everything stay within this firefly that's why there's no sight of where the captain is reincarnated to. We don't know where he's at. So, Chun Sung had a dream, another dream. It's been a while since he had a dream. He had another dream that the captain was waiting for um, Chan Ma Wu and he had a hairpin and as he was waiting for her, uh, he was going to tell her uh, that he loved her and it brings us to questioning of why he was waiting for her but he ended up betraying her and her people. So it didn't get explained to us much besides seeing him waiting for her and holding a hairpin. And then we move on to the lunar eclipse which when the lunar eclipse happened happens and the hotel becomes visible to human for that night so one night in the past a uh, general manager uh, mrs huang she um she uh was a general manager there you know so she saw what happened the night of the lunar eclipse so she was able to come back and find hotel de luna and ask them for a favor she said her daughter and her son-in-law just got married and for the honeymoon night she wishes for them to stay in hotel room 404 and the story it got explained that back then when the first lunar and the lunar eclipse happened and the hotel was open to the human or pretty much human can see it happened like in the 80s a couple who came to Seoul for their honeymoon they passed the curfew for other hotels so they couldn't rest in other hotels and they end up resting at Hotel de Luna and they were allowed to stay in room 404 humans are allowed to stay in room 404 they stayed in room 404 and for the night of that they conceived a son for that night and the son is now a famous soccer player and this son the soccer player is now married to Mrs. Huang's daughter so he is her daughter and her his son and her son-in-law now so she wants the same special gift to happen to her daughter and son-in-law so she told them the story and she said to allow them to stay the night of the um, lunar eclipse in room 404 so uh, what is it Chan Ma Wol agrees to this um, request and she they all prepare to accept a human for that night that same night something tragic happened as well Sanchez got some bad news his girlfriend Veronica was she was going to come visit him from Shanghai but on her way she died and he was going to um, 
he uh, as he was about to you know go v propose to her waiting for her at a hotel she died and he never came and he received news that she accident happened on her way from Shanghai to you know Seoul and he, he's about to go visit her and Chen Sun already see, saw the Veronica ghost and therefore he's not like oh my god it's the lunar eclipse Sanchez will be able to see Veronica one last time before she goes so Chen Sun ends up revealing his hotel to Sanchez and bringing Sanchez to the hotel to see Veronica for one last time and Sanchez got to meet Veronica before she goes and it is such a heartbreaking scene talking about this right now and I'm like I'm like tearing up because it was so sad Sanchez got to he was gonna propose but she died and she tells him like she's sorry you know she loves him and she loves him so much and he made her the happiest person and she tells him that she's gonna go now and like before he gotta hug her the lunar eclipse passes and he cannot see her anymore and she's gone now you know and so after the um, lunar um, eclipse Yuna like everything finished the human people left and everything like that uh, Yuna was a finally um, she was finally able to find the guy who has been causing these killing and it turned out to be Sol Ji Wu and uh, she called Chang Sun to come help her and Sun Chen swap um would have swapped places with her and he would deal with it and he ended up meeting this guy and it turns out it was Soji Wu and they had some talk about it and it showed up in the past that Soji Wu sent a gun to Sanchez in the past to force Sanchez to kill himself committed suicide but Chan Sun took this gun back to Soji Wu and tell so and pretty much threatened him saying that Soji Wu's father is um a uh, uh, a judge and judge in Korea they make final decisions so you know if he finds out Go Shang Sun finds out that Soji Wong is afraid of his father so he's all like you return back to Seoul and never ever bother Sanchez again so that's how you know it became like a battle hate between Soji Wong and uh, Go Shang Sun so Chang Sun was able to see that there's this lady ghost following uh, Soji Wong and she was able to, um, he allowed her to possess his body so she was able to show him the, the crime scene that So Ju Wang has been creating. So this, so, um, what is it? So this website, there's this website called Hello and So Ju Wang created and where people vent out their anger about people they hate and when they, there's so many angers about it, So Ju Wang goes and kills them so that, you know, they die so that it like pretty much helped this person like oh you know you don't you hate this person so much well guess what they're dead you don't ever have to worry about it again and then when he kills them he drains their blood out and he puts it in wine bottles that he keeps pretty much like souvenirs of the people he kills so you know him and Chan Sung gets into a fight and he was about to kill Chan Sung you know and we don't know what happened. Uh, Ji Hyun Jin gets a call from Yuna saying that Chan Sun is dead. So it's, she, she told them the situation, and now Chan Ma Wo finds out, and she panics. She demands for an answer, and they're kind of like arguing in the lobby. And the elevator opens, and Chan Sun walks in, and they all thought he's dead. Chan Ma Wo goes and fill his heart. It's still beating. She turns around, she yells at Ji Hyun Jin, is about to kill her. But it's like, um, it was a sad, like it was like a sad scene that, like, oh my god, like he's dead. Dude he come and he dead but you know it turned out it wasn't she, it turned back into a funny scene she turned out and yelled at him and then uh we and so what happened was you know uh detective park which is the only one he was able to come to the scene and help out and everything like that they kept her um G they captured uh, Ji Wong and everything like that, but later on, uh, So Ji Wong he um, he escaped it and he committed suicide and now he becomes a vengeful guest and a ghost and he has so much hatred for his death that so many people are protecting him about it. So he had like so many hate. He's feeding off of hate and Chan Ma Wo cannot kill him. So she strikes a deal with the Grand Reaper that she will um, uh, for the Grand Reaper to take him down because the Soju Wu is going to come after Chan Sung and the Grand Reaper said you need to do want something for me so it's pretty much a trade there's a little boy who has been living for a long time now and he's supposed to be dead and we um what is it his parents has been buying out other people's life lying for him and you know pretty much he needs a little boy so uh, she is aware of this so she you know she goes and she goes and get the little boy and pretty much you know tell the little boy that you 
you need to go because your parents are having a difficult time, you know. This little boy has like this line on his hand. It's pretty much his his life is ending, but his parents keeps adding their lifeline to him. And so it's making his parents suffer and they're old and all stuff like that. So the little boy decides to say, okay, I don't want my parents to suffer anymore. The little boy went with Chan Ma Wu. Chan Ma Wu finished her request for the Grim Reaper. Now the Grim Reaper has to go get So Ji Wu. So from episode 13 to 14 right here, we get introduced to housekeeper Choi So He's past. So uh, the we, she sees a, a guest comes into the hotel, which is the last, last offspring of her husband's family who comes in. She's been holding this long life grudge against this family so she was married to them for a very long time and she never she was never able to bear a child and she was old already when she finally first had her first child and it turned out to be a daughter and so they're very upset they made her husband got remarried to another younger woman and they told her to go to the temple and pray every day so that this woman can have a son until this woman gives birth to a son she can never come back while she was at the temple the her husband's family did a fortune telling on the daughter and found out that the daughter was going to bring fortune and it's going to destroy their family so they end up locking the daughter in a room the baby and they didn't feed her food, milk, water, change, didn't change her diaper and she died. So when Choi So Hee found out about it, she got so upset, she tried to seek revenge, they ended up killing her and her daughter. And so that's the grudge she holds against them and she has been waiting for like 500 years or something like that, 200, I don't know, years for them to the last offspring to finish so that this family can no longer carry on their family name. Just when she thought that was it, she finds out another lady who is married to this guy, this family, she's pregnant and her child is not born yet. Well, uh, Cho Sun Hee wants this, uh, this lady and her baby to not be born and she hopes for something bad to happen. And she sees this, you know, pretty hoping that to happen and this lady suffering with her, you know, she's bleeding, her baby's not about to be born yet, but she's going through some problems and like she thought about her past but it made her to you know stop because she cried a lot when they did that to her daughter and she loved her daughter so she cannot let that happen so she ends up saving this lady and pretty much kind of just like forget about this revenge on this family whatever you know i was once a mother i can't hurt another mother and his child now we flash onto uh, so so Ji Wong who's been haunting all these people and Chan Sung and trying to bait him out. So you know Chan Sung works with the Grand Reaper to bait him out before um what is it um before um, they were actually going to go catch So Ji Wong. He went after Yi Mira and so they had to go and save her. And Chan Ma Wu was like pretty much she didn't care. She was like oh whatever let the vengeful goals to get her. She ends up having to help Imeira because she finds out Imeira is dating Detective Park which is Yongwu. So she has no choice but to help. And she finally explains her past to um, um Oh, she finally talks about her past to Chan Sung, and Chan Sung told her that I've had dreams, and Captain, the Captain Devil betrayed you, and he has been a firefly flying around you for a thousand three hundred years, and she finally sees the the fireflies and everything. So, um, what is it? Um, this is when the past is about to get revealed to us, you know? So there's like a little boy who came to the hotel to find his mother. And he's like, I had a dream about my mom came to visit me. And she talked about Hotel de Luna. He's a human little boy and he started wandering around the hotel and he walked into the tunnel to go find his mom. And he's not allowed to go over there. When a human goes over there and they walk through that tunnel, they get confused. They get, you know, pretty much confused and directed, misdirected everything so that they would end up in the afterlife pretty much so they die you know and so Chan Sung went to help the little boy and he ended up in there and he was kind of like having confusion and everything and he was not in the right mind he was going to faint and before uh, Chan Ma Wong found out and she came to the rescue she come running to help him and Apparently, the firefly has gotten into Chan Sung's body when he was about to faint and guided him out of the um, tunnel. And Chan Ma was on the other end, and she ended up hugging him. And he he touched, he brushed her hair, and it was a familiar scene of the past to her. And she's all like, "Who are you?" And then makes you go, "Is he the reincarnation of the captain? Like, what's going on?" You know. So we just find out that he was just possessed by the captain's firefly for a bit, and she was left pretty much through this episode. Like, you know, the truth hasn't fully been revealed to us yet, but like, she's kind of like skeptical and everything like that, and she doesn't know what to do. And based on like, you know, 
Chanson's uh, dream, it seems like the captain has been like betrayed them and all stuff like that. And like, and she's like now thinking like he's probably him, the reincarnation of him. So she wants to kill him and all this stuff like that. She's frustrated and all this stuff, you know, all this stuff. She doesn't know what to do anymore. And then Mako comes to visit her and finally gives her the hairpin that the captain has been had and wanted. It was his token of love that he wanted to give to Chan Ma Wo. And she wanted to like stab that into him but like she was just kind of like whatever you know I'm not even going to deal with this or try to work things out so she ends up meeting um Soju Wong and she gives the um hairpin to Soju Wong to eat it and said so that it will make you stronger you know and she pretty much did that so that Soju Wong like pretty much helping a vengeful ghost so that she would end up getting um vanished burned by the fourth mogul so she could just go already you know so she doesn't have to wait for the flowers and everything to fall for Chang Sun to send her off because she now like thinks that Chang Sun is the captain she doesn't want to see him and she still hates him and all stuff like that so Chang Sun and the team they end up going to go trick Soju Wong getting the hairpin back the Grand Reaper catching Soju Wong Chang Sun comes and saw Chan Ma Wu and tell her from tell her that she needs to realize that you know what has happened in the past and he he will help her see what actually happened. So they send invitation to Emira and Detective Park and they come and they drink these um, drink from um, the bartender and they fall asleep and she was finally able to see everything of the past from everyone's point of view. So the captain found out, uh, the captain got caught by the king that he has been working with Chan Ma Wong and her people and they ca the king gave the captain a chance by um, you know either getting killed with them or helping them catch them you know so he ends up choosing to catch them and kill them and Yong Wong made a request that you can kill us but do not kill Chan Ma Wong and save her so the captain knew already that he chose his duty over his love so he knew that he betrayed Chan Ma Wong and she was going to come back and kill her so he was ready to take the consequences to die in her hand if he ends up dying in her hand so on the night of the wedding she comes and kills Princess Song Huang and he got he walks in and he knows she's in there ready and he was going to fight with her and he was going to uh, let her just see who wins either he kills her or he, she kills him but he loves her so much that he pierced her sword into him and he died in her arm so after seeing all of this Chan Ma Wu realized that you know uh, you know she shouldn't hold her grudge against the captain anymore and this whole time like he has not gone to the afterlife you know he betrayed her and he cursed himself and he punished himself with her too so she she let everything go and she would slowly forget and she promised that you know she would just move on and everything so and now it's time for the captain the firefly to go but the thing is he's been living around for her around her so long his light is dying he can't go anymore she needs to walk him across the bridge so now she's gonna go and and apparently when you walk across the bridge it takes you 49 to walk across the bridge and as you start to go your memory starts to fade away so Shama Wu will probably forget them if she goes but she tells them that she will be fine and she's gonna walk the captain across and she's gonna come back so for Chan Sung to wait and a month has gone by and she has not returned and every the um the mood tree, the flowers are gone, the the leaves are gone, and everybody is like, where is she? And like, Chan Sung is like waiting for her, he misses her, and he's crying. And it's just like, he's sitting by this bus station thinking about her, and he's crying. And it makes you think of Touch Your Heart when, you know, Chan, uh, um, Jan Rug was sitting at the bus station and he was crying. So for episode 15 to 16 right here, we continue off with Chan Ma Won has not returned. And everything is, they're having such a difficult time back at Hotel de Luna, and Mago has made, made announcement she has found a new owner for the hotel who is going to be taking over and so um but the thing is that the problem is they are they don't have any more the flower petals of the moon tree so they send Chan Sung on a mission to go back to get it and he goes back and um, he is told that he's going to travel back 200 years later and he's going to meet uh, Chan Ma Wo back then but here's the thing he, he cannot eat and drink anything they offer to him because if he does he's going to end up staying in that time so he goes and get the flowers and he ends up seeing how Chan Ma Wo was in the past he got to spend time with her and he misses her and when she offers her to eat eat him to eat and drink he wanted to take it but he he he, lo he misses her so much and he fears that if he doesn't if he comes back to the future he's never going to see her again so he wanted to stay in the past with her but he has faith and hope that she will return in the past so he gets the flower he returns back and 
when he returns back, he uh, he comes back to the modern time. He gives the flower petals to Mago, and she tells him that Chan Mago has returned. He runs up to the the uh, tunnel, and he sees her. He gives her one big hug and everything. And so now we finally jump into Ji Hyun Jin's past, and we find out that back then his friend Tik Sol took his identity. So it was the it was during this war time they bombed his parents, and his parents has died. His sister was injured, and she was blind, and so they needed to get to Busan with the refugees but his sister was injured so he needed to take his sister over there faster so they decided to go through the mountain and was as they was going through the mountain his friend he was disguised as uh, Japanese clothes and he was uh, he needed to change so that he can go away with the refugee too so he took Ji Hyun Jin's clothes and he was not going to help Ji Hyun Jin and his Ji Hyun Jun and his sister and they get into this fight and the French shot uh, Ji Hyun Jun by accident and Ji Hyun Jun begged him that even if you kill me please take my sister she's sick and so the friend ended up taking the sister and running and they made it to Busan with the uncle to meet the uncle of the family and everything so that's how Ji Hyun Jun died and his friend took his identity but the thing is Ji Hyun Jun made sure and he's been watching over his sister all these years to make sure that she stay alive so that his friend would suffer and have to take care of him for the rest of his life for his friend to feel guilt that his friend killed him and now it is his friend's duty to take care of his sister so with Ji Hyun Joo's past get revealed and everything, knowing that he's waiting for his sister, you know, and Yuna finds out about this and she finds out that there's going to be a new owner, therefore Ji Hyun Joo is going to go, she's in love with him, and she goes and bays, um, um, Chan Ma Wo to continue to be the new owner. She goes to steal the liquor that they made for the new owner to drink because apparently they make this drink and they find someone to drink it and they become like the new owner of, of the hotel and everything like that. So she goes to steal that gift to Chan Ma Wo, but Chan Ma Wo doesn't drink it, you know. So she she was just like, you know, I'm not gonna drink it. I'm just, my time is here. I'm gonna go. Then we jump into the bartender Kim's his past. Um, his name is Kim Shi Ik. So his story, he was a scholar and he was kicked off of being the scholar because during his time of studying to become a scholar, he had a difficult time and he didn't pass the civil exam and he took him multiple time and he started like paying attention to the people around town and started writing stories about them and there were stories of you know like how we see in stories nowadays we got you know lgbt stories you know uh, a rich guy loving a poor girl an old man and a young girl in a love relationship and all that stuff like that so he started writing those type of story and it became like it was not acceptable for his time period so he be he was known as a scalacious scholar or something like that so there's a writer in this time writing a story about him a fiction story about him and he doesn't want people to know about it so this writer is about to publish a book about him which you know it's not true and he doesn't want people to know about it because in history Kim Shi Ik doesn't exist you know they kicked him off of being a scholar so he is not in history so Chan Ma Wong and Chan Sun goes and help find out the truth and they took this manuscript and they had the they rewrote the story and erased his history of like he was a scalacious um, you know scholar and made him into a good scholar and everything like that and so his story was finally told and his uh, there's a book about him and it was a bestseller and everything like that and then we jump back to Ji Hyun Jun's story his sister has finally passed and she had came to the hotel and now he is leaving and Yuna is having a hard time but she comes see him more last time and he leaves behind his pocket watch to her and uh, she leaves and she promised that she will work hard so that they will meet again so like we already got like the bartender he went first he went after his book and everything was the book was published about him so he went already and then Ji Hyun Joo went next and now the only person left is uh, Choi So Hee the housekeeper she was able to meet the pregnant lady back then and the pregnant lady told her that she doesn't care she's gonna give birth to this baby and this baby is not going to be that family's kid because they didn't even like her they didn't even love her so so she's gonna have this baby and this baby is gonna be her she doesn't care about them she doesn't want to carry on their family name and everything she, this is all for her so seeing that this pregnant lady she has a different perspective and she you know she's gonna be strong for her child and everything you know it helped uh, Cho, Cho So He to move on and let go so she is finally going to you know go you know so she she says her goodbye and she finally goes and then we jump to seeing uh Emira and Detective Park who's planning to get married Chan Ma Wo is, she's not happy about it but she's kind of like whatever you know so she goes and visit Emira uh, one last time and pretty much kind of like 
gives her happy blessing to them and kind of like not brainwashing but turning her to realize that if she doesn't love Yong Wang in this lifetime Chan Ma will come back and make her suffer so after the blessing she realized her time is up the full moon is here and she's gonna go the hotel is gonna disappear everybody is gone already and everything like that so she gets to spend some time with Chan Sung one last time and they finally had this dream together where they have met in the past so when she was a little girl her parents was gone passed away she was still alive the grandmother was gonna come and get her but Mango told him not to get her and she ended up meeting little Chan Sung and old Ji Ho who played his father again back then and she told him her name was Chan Ma by drawing the circle and slash on his hand so apparently they have met back then and they were fated to be together so they met a long time ago and he's finally come back and they met again you know so uh, they were spent some time together. He helped. He had it snow at the moon tree so she could see snow before she goes. And then now it's um, time for them to say goodbye. And like she doesn't want to say goodbye. She doesn't believe it that she fell in love with him. And now it's so hard for her to say goodbye. But she's gonna go. But she says that no matter what, in the next lifetime, let's find each other and you know be together. She gives him one last hug and she walks through the tunnel. He stays. At at the end of the tunnel until morning and the hotel the hotel disappears and everything and he we overhear his voice that his dear moon beautiful moon has finally gone now has disappeared it's like it's so heartbreaking he stands there until she went you know and then time has went on Chan Sung is returning to New York he's going to go you know live his life he meets Yuna and she's doing good and we find out that he never took the medicine so he gave it to Yuna so now she can no longer see ghosts but he can still see them and um, what is it? Um, it's just you know he can still see ghosts, but he's conscious like whatever. And then it shows us that in a, in a different time life, you know they are together. Everybody is living happily, and it's a happy ending for them. But. That is not all. We finally get to see the Mago sister talking that there is a new owner for the hotel and the hotel is called Blue Moon and it's open and we see a man walking out of the elevator carrying a glass of whiskey and he's walking past his, his employees. He goes up to the stairs and he turns around and it's Kim so He makes a cameo for this and he tells his staff that the moon is ascending. It is time to open the door for the guests now. So that was a super long review. I'm so sorry. It was just so much stuff is going on. I tried to cut as much as I can. But yes, the drama has finally come to an end. Adashi, we loved it. And Adashi's theory, he's saying that it's because Chan Ma Wong and, and, and uh, Go Chan Sung's past was tied long ago. He was reincarnated all the time to be someone else as general manager to be with her and all that stuff like that. And he was always there with her, helping her and everything like that. So, you know, yeah like they're they're destined to be together she wasn't destined to be with the captain it was just a slight time that she met with him he was just someone you know and that she fell in love with and it hurted her and her her loved one has finally been reborn again and everything like that but it was a very good drama um, I understand a lot of fans are not happy how they wish that they could have been together they could have got each other for the ending but to me honestly I thought it was a perfect ending because you gotta understand Chan Ma Wong is not human and she needed to go so pretty much um, yeah they they met when they were little and then a thousand and three hundred years again they met again meaning they're gonna meet again you know in the next life but he she has to go she can't stay with him because her time is up and she's been tortured long enough she need and for him he understands that and he's gonna let her go so that's why she has to go so and it's okay but it was a really good drama I really enjoy it to be very honest uh, besides Master Son I actually really like this drama by the home sister too it had an amazing OST Oh my god, I used outfit. It was so beautiful. I loved it. Her jewelries, her outfit, Victorian style, and everything like that. And the storyline, even though they played in bunch of people they stuck to its cord and everything about her and the hotel and the people and they explained everything so it was really good and it was like you're just so excited about it there's sad moments there's happy moments there's funny moments there's scary moments but I really liked it that they stuck to the cord of everything of Chan Ma Wo's story of how it all started how Hotel de Luna all started and everything like that so 
really enjoy it. Hoping to see um, Ayu in another good drama. Honestly, she's get, she gets such good dramas and she plays characters so well. So hopefully to see her soon. And um, I think this is the first time Ajishi and I we actually watched a drama play by Yo Chingu. So we see him on Running Man and everything like that. So hopefully he gets a new drama that we enjoy, love watching and all this stuff like that. But um, I don't want to keep going because this video is really long already. But um, I will end it off here and I will see you guys in the next drama review.